What's going on growers? It's James Prigioni coming to you live from Jersey. Today, I'm gonna share with you how to grow peas from seed to harvest and share some tips along the way. Let's go. Before we get to planting our peas, we want to make sure we're spending a little time on planting. For instance, we want to make sure we're growing the right kind of peas and that we get the right ones in the ground, the kinds that we want to eat because there are basically three kinds of peas when it comes to backyard gardeners. The first kind are the snow peas. Snow peas are the ones that I have right over here. These are gonna have a flat edible pod with pretty small peas. And these are ones that are great for stir fry and stuff, more of like an Asian kind of pea. You'll find those a lot in the stir fries. They're delicious to eat fresh just like this too. And then we also have the snap peas. The snap peas are my favorite kind of pea. These are the ones over here. They also have an edible pod. You can eat them at this young age like this, or you can allow them to get bigger and eat them when the peas are larger in it. The third kind of pea is the English pea, sometimes called the sweet pea too. And that one doesn't have edible pods. So you just basically eat the peas that are inside of it when they're nice and plump. So those are the three kinds of peas. I mainly grow the snap peas, but I do grow a few snow peas also. And I grow the snap peas because these are my favorite to eat. Tuck loves these ones too. When it comes to planting peas, they do best in cool weather. That's why the spring and the fall are the best times to plant them. If you live in a region like me that has a very cold winter, then the best time to plant them in the spring is about four weeks before your last expected frost date. This way the peas have time to come up and grow before the weather gets too warm. That's okay if you get a late frost though, because even if the peas have emerged, they can take some late frost because they're pretty frost tolerant. The idea is that we want our uh, plants to grow and thrive before the temperatures get above 70 or 75 because once those temperatures get that high then the production of the peas will start to slow. Peas like growing in a soil with a pH from about 6 to 7.5. They like a soil that drains well but it also needs to retain moisture because when those peas are starting to form on the plants you want to make sure that there's enough moisture for them to produce and continue producing. So when I like to prepare my soil what I do is I mix in some organic matter. I like to mix in my own homemade soil. It consists mainly of compost, some cocoa core, and some peat moss. This organic matter allows the um, water to be retained within it, but then it can also drain relatively well too. If you're direct sowing your peas, which is what I suggest you do, if you want, you can inoculate your peas with the rhizobia bacteria. What this bacteria does is it forms like a symbiotic relationship with the, with the roots, and the um, bacteria actually takes nitrogen from the atmosphere and it converts that into available nitrogen for the plants in the form of root nodules. These nodules stay on the, on the plants and then after the plants die, the, root, the nodules fall off and those help fertilize the, the next round of plants. But you don't have to inoculate the plants. I didn't inoculate this plant and I don't usually inoculate mine and I still get good bacteria production on them. So it's just something you can do if you feel like you want to. Like other fruits and veggies, when it comes to peas, we want to make sure we're planting varieties that are early, mid, and late. To extend our harvest. Or we could just plant our favorite variety if it's like a sugar ann and plant that one on a staggered planting schedule. So maybe you plant it one week and then a couple weeks later plant the same variety. This way we can extend the harvest. So your earliest planting of peas, you want to make sure that's in a a really sunny location that will warm up quick because it's going to be early in the season and then your later season peas maybe the later producing varieties you can put them in a spot that gets partial shade so that when the sun does come out and it really starts heating up the plants don't get scorched too badly peas are a crop that do best when you direct sow them and when it comes to growing your peas there are two kinds you've got the bush peas or the dwarf peas and the vining peas when it comes to the vining peas, what I like to do is plant them about one and a half inches deep and then a couple inches apart from one another. I like to plant these up along a fence. And if you're up along a fence like this, I only plant them on the one side, but if this wasn't the outside of my garden, you could plant another uh, row of peas on the opposing side of the fence. This way you can kind of like double up the rows of peas right there. When it comes to growing your dwarf varieties, you could plant those just a few inches apart also. And then if you want, you could just allow those peas to grow. And since they're growing closely, they'll inter enter intertwine with one another and kind of hold each other up. But I'd rather not do that. What I like to do is just grow all my peas the same way, like the vining varieties. I like to grow them up along a fence and just encourage them to grow along that fence. This way they're very strong and can hold themselves up. When you're growing those vining peas though, you want to make sure the fence is pretty tall because some of the varieties of vining peas can get five or six or some of them even seven feet tall. So you want to make sure you have some support for the peas, especially when the strong winds come. If you're planting peas in a bed, especially the vining varieties, you want to make sure that you're planting the peas on the northern side of the bed. 
This way, when the peas get large and trellis, they're not shading anything out on the south side. And when they're young, I like to just come along and just guide these tendrils up against the fence, just delicately to encourage that growth along the fence line so they grow up and tall. Because you'll notice that once they attach to the fence line, they usually start growing rapidly. And if you want to grow your peas in the fall, you can plant your peas out about six to eight weeks before your first expected frost date. You want those to have some considerable growth before you're actually going into the colder parts of the fall and into the winter. I prefer growing my peas in the spring. This is usually when I get the highest level of production and the highest quality peas. After your peas are planted, germinated, and they start coming out of the ground, you may run into an issue like I have in the past. And the problem I was having was all the rodents, well, I couldn't find exactly what it was, were coming by and eating all my peas when they were very young. Because they were eating them while they were so young, it was preventing the peas from getting to a good growth stage and allowing them to produce enough leaves so they can get to the fruiting stage. If I come close to some of these pea plants, you'll notice they've got a lot of bite marks in them and stuff. And what I found out was the birds were the culprit. They were the ones that were eating a lot of my young peas. So the only switch I needed to make was when the plants are young, I just come by and I cover this, cover this section with insect netting. That prevents the birds from getting in and that really solves all the issue. So you might be running into the issue where your peas are getting eaten while they're young. Try insect netting. For me, it worked incredible. And then now that we have our peas growing to this point, they're fruiting, they look excellent. We're continuing to pick the fruit and the weather starts heating up. Now, when the weather heats up, if the soil temperature of the peas gets too hot, then the peas will stop producing. So we wanna make sure we're keeping the soil relatively cool and with a high level of moisture. In order to do that, we built a good, healthy soil. But the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put a nice mulch down. This mulch is gonna prevent the ground from heating up too much once the uh, sun gets really hot. This will extend our season for pea production. So we're just gonna get some nice, clean mulch down couple inches thick, allowing the ground to stay at a good consistent temperature. And I didn't have to do this till about now because it's been pretty cool out, but now some of the warmer weather is starting to come. After these peas have completely finished and we're done harvesting all of them, what we would do is we will cut the peas down at the base, but we want to make sure that we're not pulling the roots out because like I showed you earlier, on the roots, they have the nitrogen nodules, which will help fertilize the plant, the next round of plants, which will be cucumbers in the future. So when these are finished, we're gonna cut them down at ground level and transplant cucumbers into here. When it comes to fertilizer, peas tend to not really need any additional fertilizer, especially nitrogen. Actually, if you give the pea plants too much nitrogen, then they'll focus mainly on the production of leaves at, instead of the production of the fruit. So we don't really need to add any additional uh, fertilizer for this. When it comes to harvesting your peas, they're going to be ready about 60 to 70 days after you plant them. And then after you see the first flowers, usually it takes about a couple weeks, maybe three weeks till you can start harvesting. When it comes to the snow peas, you can harvest them when they're flat and the peas are just, you can see through. You want small, flat, and the peas just starting to form, very small in there. And you can eat it fresh just like this. And then when it comes to the snap peas, right behind me, we like to eat these when they're just a little more plump. So I like to eat them at this stage. But you could allow them to get larger and allow the peas to get larger within them and then just eat the peas if you want. Both of these have the edible pods, so you can eat the pods or just the peas. When it comes to the shell peas or the English peas, which I don't really have any planted, those ones you just have to eat, eat the peas. And you'll want to harvest those when they're like bright green and big and before they get really waxy. I like staying on top of picking my peas. I like eating them when they're young like this because I don't want to miss any. When it comes down to it, if we allow a pea to sit on the vine and fully ripen, then the vine is going to focus its production and its attention on the production of the seed within the, within the shell, as opposed to the, to the production of more flowers, which would be more fruit. So I like to pick a lot of the peas to trick the plant to continue to produce. I think that's a, you know, a nice little thing to do and it adds to my harvest. So when I pick my peas, I like to eat them almost as soon as I pick them. I don't want a lot of time to go past because if we allow like two or three hours to pass, then the sugars within the pea will turn to starch. Then they won't taste as good. So I like coming out here in the early morning, grabbing these fresh peas and snacking on them. This is going to be about the third round of harvest I'm gonna get from these peas. I have some of, record, some of it recorded that I'll show you. So I've been continually coming out here, grabbing peas and eating them, freezing some of them and saving them for the future. When harvesting and managing your peas, you wanna be relatively delicate with the plants. 
So when you harvest them, if you want to do it by hand, what you want to do is hold the vine with one hand and then pull away at the pea with the other hand. What you don't want to do is just grab the pea and try to yank at it like this because that will negatively affect the vine. So when it comes to peas, there are some varieties that are stringed and some that are stringless. So you have to think about that. The stringed ones, you have to pull the string off before you eat them. So if you want to grow some stringless varieties, you might want to think about that before you actually get planting. But peas, there's nothing better when you can eat them fresh like this. And I've said it once, I'll say it again, like Bill Mollison says, if you want organic food, you got to grow it yourself. That's today's video, growers. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it. I hope you take the time to get out there to get some peas into the ground. If it's a little late this year for the spring, I hope you plant some in the fall. And if not this fall, then maybe next spring. I wanted to thank Sharon Kirk, one of the new channel members, for joining Team Grow. Me and Tuck really appreciate your membership and we really appreciate you being part of the whole team, basically. So we're going to be back at you again with another one real soon, me and Tuck. We're just trying to enjoy some of the weather now that it's getting a little warmer here. We had a bad storm where there was a lot of wind and stuff and it negatively affected some of the things, but we're sure everything's gonna just gonna bounce right back. So if you guys enjoyed this video, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, share with your friends. Don't forget to check out the merch down low. And remember, whenever you're on Amazon, start your shopping with our Amazon affiliate link. Tuck and James will be back at you again real soon. We. Mm -hmm.